Oh, hello, folks. This is uh, Ken David Stewart. This is going to be my second take because uh, I got interrupted by a sub call. It's nice to be offered uh, another job every day, isn't it? Oh, it's joyous of being a sub, sub teacher. Okay. Uh, today, if I don't get interrupted, we're going to continue on with my series on a, what I call a Christian with an attitude. And this is episode three, as far as I know. And it's got kind of a long title, Living Under an Open Heaven and Being Under the Power of the Anointing. And some people are going to say, what is he talking about? A little warning or caution, if you're not a believer, you could become one by reading one of my blogs or listening to my podcasts. This may not happen suddenly. It might take a few weeks few months or possibly even a few years, but hopefully not a few years. You may come kicking and screaming, but it's not its not me, it's God calling you. Um, you know, if you hate Christians, maybe you should read this. Because there's a lot of bad press and trash talking about Christians and the fellowship of believers, and some of it is deserved. In my articles and podcasts, my goal is that you come to know the real Jesus and not the fake Jesus that is so often portrayed in the news and social media. What I'm saying is that I won't take any responsibility or credit if you become a Christian. This is between you and God. And if you feel God is pulling at your heart right now and saying, yeah, 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 go for it. Now, if you're a discouraged Christian or a depressed Christian, I hope that I can bring you some ray of hope that will produce a breakthrough in your life. For approximately one month, I've been living under what is known as an open heaven and have been blessed with a powerful anointing upon my life. There is also a time period in which one who has this gift from God lives in a special kind of favor. Now, a special favor means that basically things start going your way. I'm not a theologian or an ordained pastor. I'm just your average garden variety Christian. I have secular jobs, such as working as a substitute teacher. I'm a retired teacher and mental health worker. I'm also an author, blogger, podcaster, you name it. I'm not rich and famous, although I admit I, I would sometimes wish that I would become one. Uh, it would be nice not to fret about my financial position and, uh, you know, possibly God could throw in a red Ford Mustang in the bargain. <laughs> this I'm joking about, but I wouldn't put it past God. For the time being, I'm grateful to own a 2013 Ford Fusion. And here I am going down another rabbit hole again. Very bad tendency of mine. This means that I need to get back on top. You may ask, faithful reader, what in the world is an open heaven? You know, and I just asked this question yesterday in the car by a good friend of mine who gave me a ride to church yesterday. I don't think, you know, I can theologically define the term. So I'll just share with you what it looks like from my perspective. To start with, I have not experienced uh, an open heaven for a long time. Just last month, God brought me out of a horrible clinical depression that may have lasted for two months. During this time, I could barely get off my living room couch other than to go to the bathroom. I was not much fun to be around, you can ask my wife. After my breakthrough, now a breakthrough is when things suddenly change for you. This was a sudden change for, for the good. I began to progressively feel better on a day-to-day -day basis. Life got a little more tolerable, and I was able to accomplish at least a few simple tasks per day. After about three weeks, 
I was back to my pre-morbid baseline functional status. That's what I call it in mental health. Like I say, I used to be a mental health worker. In other words, I was now back in the saddle. I was once again living as a productive member of society. I gave God praise for this positive change, and so did my wife. You can only imagine how difficult it would be to be married to a man who was too depressed to do anything but lie on a couch and watch television. I thank God that my wife is a godly woman and did not leave me. Many would have, believe me. When I am blessed by an open heaven, things quickly start to improve for me. It may be progressive, but they start to happen. I begin to have hope again. My energy level increases, and I feel much more empowered to deal with the stresses of daily life. Stress in life is inevitable. It cannot be avoided. Whether or not stress will kill you or make you sick is significantly based on your ability to cope with life's both minor and major stressors. I don't want to settle for only being able to cope with stress. That's what the secular world will teach you and psychologists and counselors and psychiatrists. I want to thrive in stressful situations. One fact that every Christian who tries to stick out his neck or take risks for God will someday discover is that they have an enemy. The enemy's name is Satan, and believe me, he hates God and all of the Christians. He hates humanity in general, whether you're Christian or not. If one is mostly just a Sunday uh, Christian church tender, even a regular one, and perhaps on a Wednesday evening we'll go to a Bible study, but not do much else, Satan will not likely give you much of a hassle. Because you're already, uh, you're already saved, and he doesn't think that you pose much of a threat to his kingdom. If, on the other hand, you are a radical Christian, or a Christian with an attitude, as I like to call it, uh, the enemy will do anything in his power. Now, he has limited power, but he has some. To make your life miserable. As it says in the Bible, you must count the cost. My wife and I have both made the decision to count the cost and pay the price if necessary. Satan's attacks are very, uh, are very predictable, but may show up in various forms. If you usually have a harmonious relationship between you, yourself and your significant other, you may realize that now you are bickering constantly. Your car may break down, and you may be burdened with an expensive repair bill. It's out to be recently. You may think that you have a good relationship with your supervisor at work, and now find that he or she is finding fault with your performance, the fact that you're ever moved. And it isn't justified. I believe you get the idea now. Satan will do anything that he can to destroy your ministry. He will try to discourage you. If necessary, like in my case, he will try to totally immobilize you. If you are a believer, you have a ministry. You don't have to be an ordained pastor. You don't need uh, to be an ordained pastor to have a ministry. If you help out needy people, are marginalized in our society, such as the mentally ill, the addicts, the poor, etc. You have a ministry, and you, you, that could justifiably be termed lay ministry, even though my wife and I don't get paid a cent for our services. We don't worry about this because God will be a debtor to no man or woman, and will pray will repay us with interest many times over, but over and above our actual contribution. On an informal basis, my wife and I minister and mentor the poor, needy, mentally ill, 
elderly people, youth at risk, and those suffering from the disease of addiction. We both love our ministries, both collectively as a couple and individually. But believe this, it is very draining on both our finances and physical and emotional energy. That's why we need your prayers for prosperity and health and the ability to withstand the attacks of the enemy. Now that's all I'm going to say for today because that's all I wrote Saturday morning. But I hope you get some benefit out of this. You know, if you have uh, prayer requests, uh, you know, uh, please put them in the comment section or whatever. Or on, on, on Facebook, I'm under Ken David Stewart. And uh, you could send me a private message. And, um, you know, if you have any questions, you know, uh, if you think I'm crazy or something like that, well, go ahead and tell me. I mean, I've got broad shoulders. If you don't like me, well, you know, first person. And, uh, you know, but I had a, a very anointed pastor tell me one time, Ken, not all people are going to like you, but you will be able to read some that others cannot for the kingdom. So I just wish you all a very blessed day today. I speak prosperity. I speak help. I, I speak favor into your lives right now. And if you'd like to know more about, about Jesus, like I say, contact me on Facebook or WordPress. Thank you for so much for listening, and I appreciate uh, all my all my readers and those who comment, those who print like. It just encourages me because it tells me at least somebody is listening. And hopefully, and I don't say hopefully, I said I know at least one person is going to benefit from my podcast and this message. And so, love you all, and thank you again for listening. A uh, new episode may be coming in a few days. And this is Ken David Stewart signing off.